Oh, got it. There you go. There you go. All right, we're recording now. So, um, but uh, the Lord's been dealing with me. Just, just a heaviness today about the presence of his intercession, you know, how to go into that presence and as, as a watchman. And I've been really trying to practice that. And this book is really encouraging. I hope it's encouraging all of you to do yes. this kind of prayer, you know, to watch, to listen. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And then when he talks to you this way, to focus and then just go for it, you know, just ask him what it is he wants you to, um, how he wants you to pray. You know, because it's 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 refining. It's a type of prayer that refines you. It, it's a process, and it takes practice, just like anything. Yeah. All right. Amen. Praise God. So, Father, we're going to go into prayer, Lord, and thanksgiving. Basically, that's my heart desire today, Lord. That I give you thanks for this day. Give you thanks for everything that you, um, you know, that you give us, that you do for us. And we're grateful, I'm grateful, dear God, for the lessons that you teach me, Lord, the lessons that are being taught to all of us. And just in reading and studying this kind of intercession is, uh, it's, 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 it's a journey and it's a learning process. And I, I appreciate the experience, Lord. And I pray that for all of these young people here tonight, Lord, that they also appreciate the experience and, um, you know, go into it like so it's a learning thing. Go into it. Go into it. Be that watchman that God has called you to, to be. It's a it's a most wonderful experience, and um, it'll just take you to a whole different level in prayer. And He wants us to be watchmen. He's called us to be watchmen. Our Lord Yeshua is the greatest watchman. Praise God, and we follow His example in all things, and we're grateful for His example. So I thank you, Lord, for the power in the presence of the Holy Spirit here tonight. Thank you, Lord God. And I appreciate you so much for all of these people that are here, that are on tonight. And, um, and those that maybe are just, you know, wanting to be on tonight, or maybe we'll watch it later. I pray that it'll be a blessing to each and every one. In Yeshua's name, amen. 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 Would anybody have anything they'd like to share real quick a testimony of some kind or a blessing that they've received from the Lord or maybe just an experience of reading having had read this book well this um this make this reminds me of uh, Joshua and the wall in Habakkuk mm. and the thing I get from it is they had their place and their position and it was begin, been given to them by God to stand watch. Right. And the key eye for incoming enemies. And I, I, I received that so much. Good. And the early testimony the, of, of the prayer this morning, that gave me um, further information. Mm -hmm. and like, Amen. Oh, this awesome. morning, Israel's prayer. Yeah, prayer for yeah. Israel. Yeah. Yeah, 6, 6 a.m. prayer we meet for, um, we meet to pray for Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's a great time. That's a great time. Praise God. Yeah. So now that's taken you right through this evening. The power and the presence of the Lord, just because we started off so early, didn't we? <laughs> Praise God. That's awesome, though. Praise the Lord. And those of you that have that morning prayer in your own rights, just you and the Lord, it doesn't have to mean you meet with anyone or zoom into anything, but it's just you and God. You know, that's an experience in itself. Praise the Lord. Or even throughout the day, you know, I find myself just, you know, kind of going off and, and trying to practice this type of prayer you know, utilizing um, the scriptures and asking the Lord, what is it he wants me to watch for? What is it that he's trying to have me to listen to? And, you know, and, um, and you, you know, it's, it's a wonderful experience. Be surprised that what the visions he shows you and the places he takes you to in this type of prayer. Praise God. Now, when we left off last week, we're almost done with, um, with this chapter man is a watchman 
And so then we'll go into chapter seven on, six, on page 65. But right now, just to, to complete this chapter, if you don't mind turning to page 60 and right in that middle paragraph, I think we left off, uh, strengthening what remains, strengthening what remains. Praise God. I'll start off reading that scripture. Um, when, when it says Jesus speaking to the church in Sardis said, wake up, strengthen what remains and what is about to die. For I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Remember this, remember therefore what you have received and heard, obey it and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Revelation 3, verse 2 to 3. And it's, it's talking about a spiritually lifeless people just going through the motions, just going through the motions of religion. They were people in Sardis that were asleep, praise the name of the Lord. And what, it, what, what does it mean, the next paragraph reads, to strengthen what remains? What does that mean to you, to strengthen what remains? God is shaking that which can be shaken. He explains that he, he wants to strengthen what remains. When God is pruning, cutting off branches, it actually gives more strength for the other branches to come forth. I find that in the plants yeah. and the trees that we have here. I, I take care of 32 different plants in this house. <laughs> it's not that I'm such a plant lover. I just can't see anything die. And by pruning, take that physically as well as spiritually, by pruning, you know, something, by watering something, by taking care of something, um, it says here that when God wants to strengthen what remains, he'll do that to you. Yeah. Just like I do with the plants. Yeah. Praise God. You know, and, um, and when you do 32 plants, I try to do it every other week. You know, one week I put in some kind of plant food, nourishes them, strength them and then the following week or so two weeks later because you have to let it go two weeks then I water them again but I mean it's a constant you know worry it's a constant battle to keep those poor things alive you know <laughs> yeah because when you got that many plants you know you tend to maybe forget one or two but you know God never forgets anyone or anything you know praise God and when we pray the the tabernacle on Monday it talks one of the one of the um um, I always forget the, the, the word, but he takes you to a whole different place. He regenerates you. He redresses you, you know, and um, it's a beautiful thing to be able to pray in, in through intercession through that. And um, I'll tell you what it is right now. Audrey can tell us right off the top of her head. <laughs> it's one of those, um, it's not the infilling it's the cleansing, the spirit, the bronze labor, the re-identification, the redressing. He takes you through that in Psalms. And, he, and it's a beautiful place to be when he can do that. Boom, you redress you, change you, bring you to a different place. And that's what intercession is all about. That's what being a watchman takes you a whole different level in that intercessory prayer. And he will do that for you. He will prune you. He will redress you. He will refine you. Praise God. If you just take that time to go a lot deeper. Don't be satisfied with just, you know, regular prayer or just, just go a lot. This is taking you deeper. It's going to take you deeper. So it says, what does it mean to strengthen and what remains to strengthen what remains? God is shaking that which is shaken. He wants to strengthen what remains. And when God is pruning, cutting off branches, it actually gives more strength for the other branches to come forth, just like the plants I take care of. And I see the process it, they go through. When you think they're at their worst, when you think they're dying, you know, when you think they're, they're done, you know, take them out, throw them away. No, I, I, don't, I don't do that. Just like God doesn't do that with us. He'll continue to prune. He'll continue talking to you. He'll continue to remind you, you know, of maybe what you came from, where he took you from, where you are right now. And the beautiful thing is he'll, where he, he'll take you from there. 
greater places from you know glory to glory and so go through times of shaking yes times of pruning yes and when god wants to strengthen what remains we are strengthened by the word of god thank you for the word lord thank you for your scripture and by of course the holy spirit praise god and so he wakes you up doesn't he yeah through the pruning he strengthens you he strengthens you through the pruning right does anybody yeah. have anything they want to share about that? Maybe they've experienced some of this pruning. I'm sure you can tell us some great stories. So he says he wants our deeds to be complete in him. He wants us to be delivered from dead works and to allow Yeshua to work through us. As it says in John 15, 7 through 8, the chapter about pruning, if we abide in him and his words abide in us, hallelujah, he will bring forth much fruit that remains. God wants to strengthen what remains by allowing his Holy Spirit and his word to work in and through us. Praise God. Praise God. Can someone read with me, read, just read out loud that, that watching for the coming of the Lord Yeshua, right on the bottom of page 60. Oh, some of you are muted. Um, Nicole, can you read that for me? I know you're muted, so. That on the bottom of page 60, watching for the watching coming of the Lord. Watching for the coming of the Lord Jesus. Yes, thank Luke, you. Luke 12, 20 to 40 shows us an interesting relationship between worrying and watching. Mm. In the first half of this, of this section, Jesus instructs his disciples, do not worry. And in the second, he tells them to be watchful. There's a parallel between worrying and watching. Mm -hmm. If we are truly watching for the coming of the Lord, we are not worrying. And if we are worrying, we cannot be watching for the coming of the Lord. That's interesting, isn't it? I found yeah. that I had to read that a few times. That was that was great. Yeah. It makes sense. It does make sense. worry is not that mean uh, you're watching <laughs> because you're just anxious and don't know what to do right that's not watching right right that's good that's good nicole you got it um if you're worrying you're what do not worry it says it's not worry it's it says if you're worrying and watching if we're if we are truly watching for the coming of the lord you have time to worry you know we are not worrying and if we're worrying we cannot be watching for the coming of the lord because we, we're doing what we're worrying about whatever you know, maybe worrying about what's going on today or the news or, or you know, you're not watching, you're not listening. Or sleeping. Huh? Or, sleep, or sleeping. Oh, very good. Just like what? Just like the scripture we just read in Revelation 3, 2, yeah. 3, the church of Sardis. Yeah. Praise God. They were in a sleepy church. He says, yeah. wake up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Trying to wake us up, guys. Go ahead, Nicole. Wake up, we need people. <laughs> Then Jesus said to his disciples, "Right. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, with what what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is not is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens; they do not sow or reap, but they have no no storeroom or barn. Yet wow. that feeds them." And how much, how much more valuable you are than the birds? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Wow, that, that was pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Simple. Hallelujah. Yes, that was very good. Simple. <laughs> Yeah. Well, isn't gonna let isn't gonna give you any more time on this earth, honey. It's just gonna make you wrinkly and old if you worry, you know. Because <laughs> what happens when you worry? You that frown. makes it more plain to us. Right. We can't even understand the simple things. The simple things. Amen. Wow. 
but he's trying and he's allowing us to go through this journey. And if we just listen, yep. if we just watch and listen, you know, yeah. we you might know just get it. What? One thing that Lord had taught me a few, several years ago is that, and I really uh, was convicted on this, that worrying is a sin. Yeah, oh, when you, when you, good. you are sinning and why you're and how you're sinning is because you don't trust in God. You don't trust that God is going to take care of you. Yeah. Yes, wow. that's good. And, yeah, it was really interesting. And um, I, I was reading at the time the Life Application Bible. I was studying that. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. And they and so I was reading that scripture that um, that that um, uh, Nicole just read, you know, um, and then they had a whole um, a whole teaching on that at the bottom. In mm. fact, what I did is I had to I had to photocopy it and I took it to work with me because I was going through a, a really serious season of uh, really a serious worrying about some things that were going on in my life at the time. And so I here I had to read it over and over, over again. But what convicted me the most is that yeah. when I worry, when I allow right. myself to worry, I am sinning against God because I'm not trusting him. That's I'm good. That's very good. Thank you for sharing that, Audrey. I appreciate that. You know what? I, I really believe um, that we need to read this again. <laughs> okay. oh, <laughs> we need to read this one again. <laughs> you mean the scriptures? Yeah, Nicole, go back up there where it says, then Yeshua said to his disciples, I always say Yeshua, uh, Jesus uh, said to his disciples, that, 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 I think we need to read that again. Then Yeshua really said understand. to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. I need to take this into consideration, this little one right here, this part right here, because I'm a, I'm, I do worry about these silly things, you know? <laughs> I'm the only one who gets all wound up in it, you know? <laughs> Go ahead, honey, I'm sorry. Which one, what you eat, your body, or what you wear, which one? Yeah, what, what I eat and what I wear. <laughs> it's constant, you know? I'm constantly overthinking all that, and I need to just chill out, as, the, as my nephew would say, just chill out. <laughs> uh, all right, go ahead, life don't, is more. Don't worry, be happy. Yeah. Just wait, wait on the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Ah, you hear that? I, yeah, I'm, that's why I said read it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this for myself as much as you guys, so. Life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Amen. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than the birds. Who are you by worrying can add a single hour to his life. Amen. Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Praise God. And I love what you said, Audrey. You said worrying is a sin. Worrying, worrying is a sin. Worrying is saying that God is not big enough to fill your need. Right. Amen. Amen. So, that's questioning God. Huh? That's questioning God. Very good. It, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Sometimes worry about the food is not like we don't have nothing to eat. It's mm. just not what we want. Yeah. We still have food. Mm -hmm. We still have clothes. I know we're so blessed, aren't we, Nicole? We're so blessed. Praise God. All he wants us to do, communicate with him, love him, believe in him, have hope and faith. It's all in him. There's a song, an old Pentecostal song. It's all in him. It's all in him. The fullness of the gospel, it's all in him. Praise God. All about him. All about him. Nicole, would you continue you? reading? <laughs> you know that song. <laughs> um, would you continue reading, Nicole, all the way down to Luke 20, 12, 22, 34? Consider how the lilies grow. Yes. They do not labor or spin. Yet, I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. Here we go. 
and do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Right. Do not worry about it. For the pagan returns, for the pagan world, once after all such things. Yes. And, and your father knows what you need them. Your fathers know that you need them. Yes. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Amen. Praise God. Do not be afraid, little flap. For your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possession and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourself that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted. Where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. I Luke love that. 12, 22 to 34. That's beautiful. Praise God. Mm. Who would like to read the next paragraph all the way till page 62? I'll read it. Thank you, Will. Oh, I wasn't Will. It was Audrey. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. You well, that. I didn't even look up when you, when you said, I will. I thought it sounded like Will. <laughs> You're next, Will. <laughs> <laughs> Our voices sound alike. I sound yeah. young. I didn't look up until <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Numerous times in this passage, Jesus says, do not worry. If we watch the birds and the lilies of the field and see that God takes care of them, we realize that he will take care of us as well. If we have that kind of faith and dependence on the Lord, we will be ready for his coming. No. Yes, <laughs> it is yes. interesting that Jesus exhorts the disciples not to worry, then goes directly into the subject of watching for the coming of the Lord. We can learn from the birds. We can learn from the lilies of the field, not to worry, but to watch for the coming of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Praise yes. God. Praise God. You can continue reading, Audrey. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning like, a, like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth, he will dress himself to serve and will have them recline at the table and will come and he will wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the second or the third watch of the night. Wow. 12, 35 through 38. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. It says, be dressed, ready for service. Amen. Praise the Lord. And keep your lamps burning like men good. waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet. Glory to God. So that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door because they're ready, because they're watching and they're listening for his return. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes, because he said he'd rather have you do that. And listen, then praying, watch and listen when he comes. I tell you the truth, he will dress himself to serve will have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. Hmm. Luke 12, 35, 38. Be that watch of the night. Praise the name of the Lord. Be the watchman that he's called us to be. God has always, always had watchmen. Praise God. Those he gives early warning to regarding key issues in the earth. I read this last week. Watchmen live, they live, being a watchman, you live a powerful combination of a prophetic and prayer anointings that the Lord chooses and uses to bring order in the midst of chaos and victory, in the midst of wars and of attacks. That's being a watchman, being ready watching and listening, just like the title of this book, he's preparing you, they're preparing you for the way of Messiah. Praise God, be prepared and preparing the way for Messiah. Praise the Lord, so you'll know of his coming. You'll know 
of his return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Be that watchman, praise God, in the midst of chaos and victory. In you know, the midst one, of attacks. Yes. One of the things, one of the, things if you, to think about, too, is that if we're so caught up in worrying about our own needs and our own um you know, like our, if, if we're going to have food or clothing or, yes. or shelter, if we're all so caught up in that, we can't watch if we're caught up in it, ourselves. Exactly. Focusing in on us instead of looking outward. That's, That's right. So you're not, you're going to miss it. Yep. Yep. You're going to miss it. Praise God. Wow. Like the five bright, bright, like the five brides. Whose candle went out and he had to go out and, and get more. Uh -huh. and, when, and then when he when he came back, the That's master was, they couldn't come in. Mm, amen. Hallelujah. Mm. <clears throat> so then it asks, after sharing all of this and reading all of these scriptures and wanting and having to wait upon him and not worry because it is the sin, are you are you are you a watchman? Do you find yourself in that place of intercession? Do you believe that you are a watchman? Do you feel at this place in your life that God is calling you to that type of prayer? To listen and to watch for his coming. You can ask yourself that question. Does anybody think they have the answer? Nicole? I'm working on it. I know you are. I know you are. I believe that those of you that are watch reading this book is because you feel that calling somewhat in your life. I mean, you're a queer person. You're an intercessor. So I, be, I believe yes. Yeah. I've already confirmed that. The Lord's already confirmed that in my life. I, I've just never entitled it, you know? Yep. Just a queer person, an intercessor. But to be a watchman, to be that particular what person, that watchman that watches, that listens, you know, for the particular voice, you know, for his return. I, I, like Audrey was saying, you got to be at that place so, so that you can hear when he returns, so that you can be ready when he returns and be prepared. Praise God. Praise God. So every so often as you're reading this book, ask yourself that question. Will, ask yourself that question. Am I, am I... Am I, is the Lord, are you preparing me, Father, for this type of prayer? Is that why I'm interested? Is that why I'm listening? You know, is that why I put the effort into being here every Wednesday night? Because I'm, I'm determined to, 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 to learn and to be obedient to that calling. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. It's a beautiful place to be, you know, and I want to go deeper. I don't, you know, um, well, this it'll go into explaining and expressing in, in, as we read so much more about what it is. And, and then it asks, are you interested in growing in your ability to hear from God? I am. And I am. Amen. Amen. Yes, you are. I, yes, I am. Amen. I know That's you are. That's why we're here. That's why, That's we're, why we're here. Exactly. Thank you. That's, it's absolutely right. Praise God. And 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 in and, 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 and all of that, Nicole, it's 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 you're becoming that person that God can utilize. You know, he, he's he's preparing us for just that, to be that watchman, to be the one on the wall, to warn people of certain things. You know, to have that prophetic gifting in you um, as a watchman in that particular type of prayer, to be to be able to see and feel the warnings. You know, yeah, yeah, praise God. So it makes you, so it also says, if you're interested in that ability to hear from God and being used powerfully by him, you can actually, through that particular intercession, you can actually shift world events. Believe that. Okay. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's go on. We'll finish this up here. Um, so Audrey left off at, uh, let's see, that last scripture. First thing. 12, 35, 38, and page 61, right? Yep. So we're on page 62. So, oh, she's, she's off now. Will. 
I'm still here, but we'll continue. Oh, you're still here. All right, hon. we're on page 62. I was going to ask you to, to continue um, from the first thing that is we should be dressed. First paragraph on page 62. I think that's where we left off, right? Yeah. Yep. Are you going to continue? Are you going to continue, Audrey? I forgot I muted myself. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. I've done that all the time. I do that all the time. Yeah. The first thing is that no, we okay. should be dressed, ready mm -hmm. for service. We should be. We should put on the whole armor of God, and on the, and put on the Lord Jesus Christ, so that we would are ready for service at His coming. So next, we should be watching for the master because he will return from the, for the wedding banquet and we must be ready when he comes. Then we should be ready so that the, uh, so that the door may be immediately opened for him. Amen. Finally, it would be good for those whose servants, who, I'm sorry, it would be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Amen. Do you want to be watching when the Lord Jesus comes? If yes. you are free, you are not watching. Oh, we are you are preoccupied with the cares of this world. But if you are not worrying, you are like the birds and the lilies, just trusting in him. You are watching for the coming of the Lord, and it will be well for you. Of mm -hmm. those who the returning master finds watching, Jesus Yeshua says, I tell you the truth, he will dress himself to serve and have them recline at the table and will come and he will wait on them. Yeshua, when he comes back, will be dressed to serve. As the bridegroom, he will be serving the bride. For those who are found ready, Yeshua says that even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night, he, they have made sure that they are ready. We should be ready, yes. watch for his coming, ready for his coming, even if he comes at the second um, the third watch of the night, even if he comes at nine in the evening or at midnight, we should be ready, prepared for his coming. This is one of the reasons he says that we should not go to sleep at night without settling things with our brothers and our sisters. If these problems, if there is a, pro a problem between us, we should not allow the sun to go down before the problem is resolved because mm -hmm. if, they we, if we have unresolved conflict with our brother or sister and the Lord comes back in the middle of the night, then we are not ready for his coming. The mm -hmm. Lord wants us when we go to bed at night to leave nothing unresolved with him and with our brother and our sister so that we are on the watch prepared for his coming. Let us remember his warning. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Luke 12, 39 through 40. Wow. It's clear mm -hmm. that the Lord is coming at an mm -hmm. hour that we do not expect. This means we always have to be ready because we will not be expecting his coming. Only those who are really prepared for his coming and are watching him day and night will be ready and prepared for his coming. Therefore, we should always be on the watch and we should always pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God help us to learn not to worry, but instead to watch the birds and the lilies, even as they are trusting in God. May we trust him and be watching and prepared for his coming. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. I like that word says up here in the middle paragraph that you just um, up above, it says, the Lord wants us when we go to bed at night to leave nothing unresolved with him and with our brother and sister so that we are on the watch prepared for his coming because we're not to worry. We're not yep. to be in, 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 in a place of chaos. Yep. You know? Yeah, we have to be in a place of, a place of peace. Clear mind you know, and clear heart, praise the Lord, so that when he comes, you know, um, we're, we're going to be good with him, you know, we're good, we're in a good place with him, Amen. you know, yeah, 
Praise God. So husbands and wives, you know what they say? You yeah. know, you shouldn't go to bed if you if you're angry, you know, never. Or if you're you know, if you've argued or or if there's a, an unrest, you know, things that are not been completed, you know. And um, so yeah, I hear that a lot yeah. with couples. Yeah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's go up to page. Um, the next page here where it says applying the 20 aspects there's a these are just suggestions on how you can incorporate this in prayer 20 aspects of watching into your watch time daily your prayer time daily consider dividing these particular um you know uh, um where it talks about watching the word watching by waiting and watching and, and intercession to be led how to pray in these particular areas and it just says to, to you don't have to pray them all at once. You just divide them, you know, maybe throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the evening. Um, but you have to be led, most importantly, by the Holy Spirit. So how to pray and watch. Watching the Lord. Um, there's six of them watching the Lord. Thanksgiving. Worship and praise. Pouring out your heart like water before the Lord. Watchman prayers. Stay awake spiritually and physically. Watchmen going up to Zion, the New Jerusalem, Jeremiah 31, 6. Um, watching the word, read, memorize, meditate on scripture. I won't read them all. Uh, see, watching by waiting, waiting on God, inquiring of the Lord. These are particular areas that you can meditate on in scripture um, and pray. Divide them up as much as you possibly can, or you can go through all of them in one morning or in an hour. Uh, and pray through these, watching by waiting, waiting on the God, inquiring of the Lord, listening to the Lord, um, reporting what he sees in the right way in time, and then D, watching in intercession. Keep watch. Do not allow your house to be broken into, standing as a watchman, entering victory, warfare, and worshiping him, shouting joyfully, proclaiming, and sounding the alarm. Hallelujah. So, um, watching the word, watching by waiting and watching by intercession, but be always led by the Holy Spirit. So these are just some of the aspects of, of praying, applying these 20 aspects into your daily time of prayer, of watching, as they say. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I, um, I'm not going to read this prayer this watchman prayer, it's, I think it's the same one that we, at the end on every chapter. I want to go right into chapter seven, watching heaven. Um, why don't we do that on page 65? Okay. Will, would you um, start off reading page 65, the Lord's Prayer? Yeah. Thanks, Will. I appreciate it. Yeah, read right up to... Um, if you can, right up to the next page of Ephesians, okay? Okay. All right, awesome. Watching heaven. The Lord's Prayer prayed by Jesus on the Mount of Olives. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's Matthew 6, verse 9 through 10. Is beginning to be answered. We live in the days of restoration. God is moving in a powerful way in these days to restore the 24-hour watch of the Lord in Jerusalem and worldwide. This is the tabernacle of David spoken of in Amos 9 and Acts 15, verse 16. Are we watching the chief watchman, the Lord God Almighty? Are we lifting up our eyes towards the hills from where our help comes, watching for his soon coming? Are we lifting up our eyes, watching to the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth? Psalm 121. What are we saying on earth with our lives and words? What we are saying on earth with our lives and words should reflect what is happening in heaven. God is leading his people on earth to continually be partakers of what is happening in heaven. The yes. more heavenly hearted and minded we are, the more earthly good we will be. Amen. Colossians 3 verse 1 through 3 says, since then you have been raised with Christ Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. 
put to death anything of old nature. Colossians 3.12 is an exhortation to clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience that comes from the Lord God in heaven. Did you want me to stop there at Ephesians? Oh, no. Go right ahead, right up to the next page, last scripture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ephesians 2.6 says, we are seated in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Our citizenship is in heaven. We need to know positionally where we are seated and act and live like a heavenly people. According to Hebrews 8, 1, 2, and 5, we do have such a high priest who sat down at right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord. Priests serve in a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is happening in heaven. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain to be put into effect when the times have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. Ephesians Amen. 1. May the earth join with what is happening in heaven day and night. Day and night. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See who else is out there. Denise. Oh, I think she's gone. Minister Denise. I'm here. <laughs> there you go, dear. Are you, can you read um, Holiness is Happening in Heaven? Yep. Page 66. Yep. All the way down, if you don't mind, or actually up to page 67, be there forever. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Holiness is happening in heaven. Yes. In heaven, they never stop saying, holy, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Revelations 4.8. We are the, to be partakers of his holiness on earth as in heaven. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Colossians 3.12, we are to reflect the nature and the character of God in heaven. Holy is his name. Matthew 7. 2. Love is happening in heaven. Colossians 3.12 says we are dearly loved. Yes. We are so dearly loved by our Father in heaven that he sent his Son, only Son, from heaven to earth and gave him to, and gave him to die for our sins. Yes. That whosoever of us believes and trusts in him will not perish, but have eternal life. We are to love one another, one another on earth, even as he has loved us. Compassion is in heaven, is, is, happening in heaven god is full of compassion exodus 34 6 and he passed and he and uh, he and, and he had uh, he passed in front of moses proclaiming the lord the lord's the lord the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abundant in love and faithfulness. Also, Jesus was moved with compassion when he saw the sheep without a shepherd. Matthew 9, 36. He asked his disciples to pray the Lord's Pray for the Lord 
of harvest of the harvest right to send labor <laughs> into the harvest yes if we are partakers of what is happening in heaven we will be also full of compassion as god god the father and the son of, for our souls to come to know God, even as Jesus, Jesus wept over Jerusalem in his, in his intercession, mm -hmm. he is still weeping for Jerusalem and the nations. For kindness is happening in heaven. God's loving kindness is better than life because God is love. Yes. First Corinthians 13 says, love is kind. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Whosoever is kind to the needy honors God. Proverbs 14, 31. Colossians 3, 12. And Ephesians 4, 30, 4 32. Humility is happening in heaven. Jesus took, took on the form of a servant and humbled himself, left heaven, came to earth, and became and began to and became of no no reputation. Uh, yes. reputation. Yes. Suffered greatly and died the death of a criminal yes he called he is calling us to humble ourselves as he did john the baptizer was an example may we decrease as john did that Jesus may increase, that he may be seen through us on earth as in heaven, the marks on his hands and feet of Jesus and on, on, on that of our saints who suffered will be there forever. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, um, Denise, for reading that. I know that was a lot. Praise God. It's a lot of reading. <laughs> so, but the beautiful thing about it is that it, what it's sharing here and may the earth join with and what is happening in heaven day and night. And when you're praying in, this is a watchman and you're listening to understand that holiness is happening in heaven. Love is happening in heaven. You can pray through all of that. Compassion is happening in heaven. Kindness is happening in heaven. Humility is happening in heaven. All of those things that we experience here on earth are happening in heaven. And we're about to read patience is happening in heaven. And um, I'll read that. Um, Jesus is waiting and has been waiting for thousands of years to come for his bride. James says he is waiting in heaven with long patience for the fruit of the earth to come forth. So patience it, it entitles here is happening also in heaven. Never think of the Lord as being a, you know, I know he's a patient God because he's patient with myself. You know, I know that. But to think that it's happening in heaven, I guess it's because he is all of that, you know, that it would be happening there. So James says he is waiting in heaven with long patience for the fruit of the earth to come forth. On earth, there is very little patience in our fast paced life. Even as believers, we live in the days of instant coffee, instant mashed potatoes, instant weddings. Yeah, instant weddings. In heaven, there is long patience. May we as believers on earth become partakers of the patience in heaven. May we reflect on earth the patience of heaven. Praise God. Bring that down to this earth so that we can be as patient as the Lord is with others as well as ourselves. Praise God. If they don't come to the Lord so right quick, you know, the way we want it to happen, it's not God's timing. Praise the Lord. So.
So we need to be patient. Praise God. Forgiveness is happening in heaven. In heaven is the throne of grace, which we are to approach boldly with confidence so that we may receive mercy and forgiveness. And Yeshua, who died for our sins, is in heaven. And we find mercy and forgiveness at his throne of grace in Luke 11.4. Forgive on earth as I have forgiven you at my throne of mercy and grace in heaven. Praise the Lord. And shalom, peace is happening in heaven. Praise God. Romans says the kingdom of God is righteousness. Shalom, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Did someone want to share something? I don't mean to interrupt. I thought I heard someone want to say something. Or were you just saying hallelujah or thank you, God? <laughs> what happened? I lost you. Oh, we're right here on page 67. No, I um, can hear you, but I can see nothing. <laughs> you can't see anything? No. Your yes. book? No, down at the bottom of your screen, do you see the Zoom? Do you see the camera? Click on that and this picture will come back up again. Oh, oh, I see what you, I, I didn't know what you were saying. I thought you had the book on, on screen. No, she didn't, no. So you lost us, okay. Yeah, she lost, she clicked out of our, our picture. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, uh, I, saw, I saw Biden. And do you, you see Biden? Biden? I'll cancel Biden. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For now, anyway. <laughs> But, what yeah. verse Romans? What verse in Romans? Oh, um, let's see. We're on um, forgiveness is happening in heaven. It's Luke eleven four. Forgiveness is see because you don't have the book, right, Ramon? Yeah, I ordered it. <laughs> oh, oh, all right, then that's good. No, because we were um when you get the book, we're on page sixty seven, and it's for, it's talking about forgiveness is happening in heaven. We were trying to get um, Nicole back. She lost us all. On the screen. Oh, here we are. See, there you go. I think you did that last week once or two. I, I don't know what you did, but okay. You're all set then. We're back. Hello. <laughs> so Ramon, um, I'll read that again because it was out of Luke 11.4. I don't know where you got, the, um, let's see. And then the other ones were Matthew and Proverbs, so didn't read out of Romans yet, but maybe that one will come up in the next ones. You did. You mentioned um, a Romans says the kingdom of God is righteousness, shalom, peace. That might be what he's oh, talking that about. Was, oh, okay. That was before. Yeah. Yeah. I was just wanted to get the verse. Oh, I don't. Okay. See, I you don't said Romans, but that. I didn't hear the verse in the chapter. Yeah. Hmm. The book doesn't give one. It just says. Um, yeah. It just says it. That's why oh, I was. Okay. I'll read. find it. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate All right. It. I was going to say, wait a minute, where, where did I not read from? Okay. But anyway, Ramon, um, we're on page, thank you, Will. <laughs> page 67 on uh, number seven, forgiveness is happening in heaven. Yeah, what they're talking about here are the different, um, the different things that we're praying through to bring heaven onto earth and vice versa through prayer. And it mentioned a lot of things happening in heaven that or should also be happening here on earth, like kindness and compassion and love. And we're read, read patience. Forgiveness is happening in heaven, praise God. And that's where I was leaving off. So I'll read it again for you, Ramon. In heaven is the throne of grace, which we are about, uh, which we are to approach boldly with confidence, so we may receive mercy and forgiveness. Yeshua, who died for our sins, is in heaven, and we find mercy and forgiveness at his throne of grace in Luke 4, 11, 4. Forgive on earth as I have forgiven you at my throne of mercy and grace in heaven. And number eight is shalom, peace is happening in heaven. Oh, there it is. Roman says the kingdom of God is righteousness. See, I don't remember even reading that. We, we stopped so quick. God is righteousness, shalom, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Heaven is a place of holiness and righteousness. Heaven is filled with shalom. The word shalom means peace, safety, quiet, wholeness, hello, and goodbye. This is the word for greeting one another in Israel. The believers in Indonesia greet each other in the same way. I didn't know that. And in other nations, this is also beginning. When we greet others by saying shalom, as believers, we are saying and proclaiming, may the shalom that is in heaven be manifested in your in your in your life on earth 
what a powerful proclamation or a greeting. Yeah. As we do this by faith as believers, we will see many lives changed. Shalom, everyone. Praise God. <laughs> Would someone like to read Joy is Happening in Heaven? That last paragraph up until the next page, 68, A Night in Our Cities. I can read. Thank you, Will. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy, and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. If the statistics are true that almost as many people have been saved in Thetisade, 10 years of 1990 than in all the previous years. If all of heaven rejoices whenever someone crosses, when someone comes to repentance, then the rejoicing in heaven must be greatly increasing. All of heaven rejoices at every salvation. We should also have a rejoicing party on earth whenever someone gets saved. If we are to reflect what is happening in heaven, even as they had a big party and rejoiced when the prodigal son came home. Amen. 10, intercession is happening in heaven. Jesus has been ever living to make intercession in heaven for the last 2000 years. According to Hebrews 7.25, this has been his primary ministry in heaven. The throne of mercy is open continually to all who will receive it and his grace, God's riches at Christ's expense, is constantly available. He is standing in intercession for all to come to him for salvation. He is calling us to be intercessors on earth, standing in the gap with him in heaven. To agree that those on earth will be born from above, from heaven. Today, those of us on earth are to finish filling the golden bowls in heaven with our prayers. The 24 elders in heaven are getting ready to hold the golden bowls full of the prayers of the saints and to see the scrolls opened. Revelation 5.8. The 24 elders in heaven represent the 24 divisions of, wor of worship in heaven for each hour of the day. They have harps in one hand and bowls of intercession in the other. If the elders in the cities of the earth led the 24 hour watch as they sit on the gates of their cities, joining with the 24 hour elders, 24 elders in heaven, multitudes will follow their lead and we will see thousands on the watch continuing day and night in our cities. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Let's see who else can read. Let's see, Nicole, can you read uh, Goodness and Giving Are Happening in Heaven? Goodness and Giving Are Happening in Heaven. 1 Chronicles 7 says, We are to give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. God is great and has spoiled us with his goodness. Everything we receive is more than any of us deserve. Amen. We on earth can receive only what is giving him from heaven. John 3, 27. In Matthew 6, 19 to 21, Jesus said, Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and was destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself in heaven, where moth and was do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. Where are your treasures? On earth or in heaven? Mm. I believe the reason the first church in Jerusalem share all things in common and none among them lack anything was because they took Jesus' teaching on finances literally. They saw what was happening in heaven and said the same thing should be happening in Jerusalem. So they laid money at the apostle's feet and none like anything in Jerusalem as in heaven. Praise everything, God. everything we receive that is of value of what comes from heaven because God is good. This includes salvation, grace, food, glory, Christ being formed in us, the Holy Spirit and fire. Every good and perfect gift is from above and from our Father, the Father of heavenly lights, Jesus, the living bread of life that came down from heaven. Jesus says, my flesh is real food and my blood will drink. John 6, 55. He gives us each day our daily bread in the natural and spiritual from heaven. He said that the one 
who feeds on him will live because of him. May we give out the bread of life and feed the sheep on earth with the bread he gives from heaven so his people will feed on him and be more satisfied with Jesus on earth than with earthly material things. If we truly believe in heaven, we should be much bolder than Muslim fanatics. They give their lives as martyrs and end up in hell while we inherit heaven when we give our lives for the gospel. St. Francis said, it is in giving that we receive and in dying that one finds eternal life, heaven. St. Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is to gain heaven. Philippians 1, 21. Hallelujah. Would anybody like to, Nicole? you like to share into this a little bit? This was really good. Good stuff. I like where it says that we truly believe in heaven. We should be much bolder than Muslim fanatics. I know. Oh, yeah. Boy. Yeah. And he yeah. gives us each day our daily bread, natural and spiritual food. Yes. When I pray, I always say thank you for natural and spiritual food. Amen. You know, the daily bread, that's, that's part of my prayer every day. Every day, yeah. yeah. You know what I, I have to admit? I've gotten away from when you mentioned that. I say it to myself because I live with so many unsaved people, you know? I say it to myself under my own breath like when we're at a meal or even when we go out. And it was always a habit of mine just to be bolder in that respect, you know, even if they were mixed, you know, all over people there for a meal or whatever, I would always, no matter what, say grace. But um, I would look at their faces and they weren't always so happy because a lot of them are not believers at all, you know, and they, so I would always, I, I stopped it because I felt like I was in, you know, I, I was being bold, yeah, but I just felt like I was kind of, it was almost a bother too, you know, to do that when others, could care less, but so I, I would just say, now I just say it to myself, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I, and I'm praying about maybe being bold again, because you yeah. do have to be a witness, you know, do you, does anyone agree with that? Yes, I agree. Cause um, you, you, it would be good to keep it short, but I've been, always made it a practice to, especially with my family, you know, to say yeah. now it's kind of cool is that they wait you know, we sit down and Carrie looks at me or, or Eric looks at me, my son-in-law and wait for me to pray. <laughs> they leave it to you. Yeah. And they wait for me to pray because they, they want me to. And then also it's kind of funny because, you know, I have a, a good relationship with my ex-husband whenever he has any kind of a get together. Oh, uh, Audrey's going to pray because she's going to pray. going to pray. <laughs> Pastor Audrey's gonna pray. Yeah. So not that I want to pray. I never asked to pray, but oh, Pastor Audrey's going to say grace now. So you, everybody be quiet. We got to pray. So, so she can pray. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. so funny. <laughs> you know, you get into these bad habits, you know, uh, for myself anyway, and you just tend to get a little lazy about it because you figure I don't want to be in people's faces. You know what I mean? And um, there's so many different people, religion, people believe in such, so many different religions in my family. And I call it a religion because it's not a walk of faith or a love for the Lord, whoever God they believe. And so I don't want to be an intrusion, you know, in a way I used to feel like I was intruding in a way and their own moment, you know, why should I? And so, but I, but I always did, you know, as a new Christian and, and for years, for years, for years, I've always you know, would say grace, you know, or, or I would kind of see, they expect it from you. But um, when you have someone who's a Wiccan or you have someone who is Muslim or think they're Hindu or I don't know, whatever they believe, I just feel like I was intruding in their moment or their time in their meal. So, and I would look at my sister-in-law's, my niece, my nephew's wife rather, she, her face is that she would make almost very evil. She's the Wiccan. And so I would sort of feel like maybe, you know, Lord, it's just between you and I, Lord. And, and in this public arena, I'm not going to, to do no. that. But you see, I never, I was never like that. Right. So that's, that's that the enemy. You know, I don't say it, I don't say it loud, but I still do. Like sometimes we have a function at the center and then I notice people like 
they want. Yeah. But I just put my head down and I just say yeah, my prayer. I, do. I don't say that's it aloud, do. but I just yeah. say it for a few minutes. Yeah. And then yeah. whoever don't like it, it's just too bad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. I, I totally uh, believe in authority. Um, you know, and the of uh, the person of the house, the owner of the house. Yeah. And I know that it's not the Wiccan that owns the house. And Amen. No, it's, it's not. Sister. That's right. And uh, so, you know, in that situation, you know, what I would do is I would just ask your sister, you know, ask my sister, would you mind if I just prayed, a, um, just prayed a quick prayer? I'll, and that I'll be short. I promise I'll be short. You know, that sort of a thing. <laughs> Make a joke of it or something. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, ask, you know, ask her for permission. And that, and really, because it, what it is, is a witness to that Wiccan and mm -hmm. witness to the, the Hindu with a witness to all those who are non-believers or who mm -hmm. are sitting around the table. Yeah. And, and it really, and Carmen is the one is in charge of that house. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. So Amen. ask her and say, yeah. hey, would you mind? And, and I know what she's going to say. Oh, please. We need prayer. I know her. <laughs> I, know her. Yeah. I love Carmen. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, go ahead and do That's it. That's my sister. And mm -hmm. yeah. So what if the Wiccan's nose is put out of joint? That's her problem, not yours. Amen. You know? That's the, that's the God she serves, yeah. you know, that's making her at whole, you know, attitude in her yeah 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 so i'm i'm asking the lord for release again you know um to be able to to be that individual you know that boldness again because i think it's very important and he's been kind of dealing with me on that for a while now i mean because they they're all over the place when they eat no one's in one place you know so sometimes i would just sort of say it out well god bless this food nourish it to our bodies in yeshua's name and that's it you know <laughs> Thank you, God, for this food and for the hands that repaired it. And that's it. And that's all I would say. But um, yeah. And so whoever heard it, heard it. And I have to find that boldness again. Praise the Lord. Because this is, I'm also, this is also my house. Now that I live here, I have to get that, you know, mindset. Amen. So thank you, Lord, for that. Praise God. Yeah. I'm glad um, we shared this together. Um, it's it's almost eight thirteen. I'm gonna, if you don't mind, we can continue. Just at least this one page, and then we'll be, you know, we'll be all set. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We we went till eight thirteen, eight fifteen last week, so that was really good. And praise God. So where did we lend off, Audrey? I was gonna ask you to read. Blessing and worship. You live as Christ, and for you, guys get okay. Where is it? Blessing and worship are happening in heaven. All kinds of things are happening in heaven. Praise God. Got it. So page 69. The last thing Jesus did, Yeshua did before he ascended into heaven was to bless his disciples. Oh, I so believe in blessing. Amen. Um, <laughs> there we go. Family, blessing your friends. Yes. Release blessing over them. Luke 24 verses 30 to 31. He lifted up his hands and he blessed them. While he was doing this, he was taking he was taken up into heaven and they worshiped him. Shortly before this, Jesus said to his the Jewish people, "You will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord." Yes, Lord. Praise God. And in other words, until you bless me. Matthew yes. we talked about this morning. Um, yeah. So 2339 it is also interesting to see how Yeshua blessed the children during his life on earth. The high priestly prayer says, the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. Ironic blessing. Yeah. Yes, and give you his shalom. Yes. Yes, amen. We are a blessed people. Ephesians 1, 3 says, we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ mm -hmm. Yeshua, in Yeshua, Yeshua Mahamashiach. <clears throat> may we continually bless or minister to the Lord and bless his people and all people, even those who curse us. Luke 6, 20, <coughs> I'm sorry, Luke 6, 28. Yes. We are blessed and we're called to be a blessing to the Lord. The Jewish people and all people <coughs> preparing the way for the Jewish people to say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Amen. for the homecoming of the blessed one to his city, Jerusalem. Throughout all eternity, all things in heaven and on earth will be joined in one in, one in Messiah, Ephesians 1.10. And then we will join with the heavenly symph 
heavenly symphony and eternal wish worship because God created man to worship him and enjoy him forever. Amen. Yes. Unfortunately, for the most part, man turned from God to worship other false gods and partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil instead of the tree of life, which represents the high and holy one who inhabits eternity. He desires us to worship him on earth as they do in heaven. He Amen. wants us to give him all of our worship and all of our praise. May we who love God. May we who love God give none of our worship or affections to the false gods of mammon and this world. May we give all of our adoration and attention and worship and affection to the Holy One of Israel, the Lord God Almighty. May we, by our words of worship and deeds of our lives, continually say day and night as God is birthing the 24-hour worldwide watch, Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and who and is and who is come. Revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. Praise the Lord. And so all what they were, th those in titles were, um, were 24 hours a day, God's kingdom is coming to earth as it is in heaven. Praise God. And that's out of Matthew 6, 9. And so we were declaring that in reading this. And what, what you should do, what, what I'm planning on doing is to go through these throughout the prayer, along with that other page where it talked about the 24 um, notices or on the other, on the, let's see, I'll find that for you. The last page we just read on chapter six, I think it was, you can either, you know, the, uh, the different aspects of applying the 20 aspects of prayer, watching the Lord, watching the work, the watching by waiting and so on and so forth. And it gave you many examples. You can turn that into a watchman prayer and prayer of intercession. Um, and also I believe that what we should do, not that we're gonna be a 24 hour house of prayer, but take all of these, these 24 hours a day, God's kingdom, bringing that down to earth in prayer, love, holiness, compassion that we just read out of page 66, patience in 67 so on and, and the shalom peace in the book of romans it talks about and to take those and pray them each as you have time as you as you as you you know just put that into your daily prayer if you can you know and um i know the lord will will truly bless you praise god humility joy all of this is happening in heaven and through your intercession you bring in it bringing it down to earth Praise the Lord. And into your heart, into your lives, into those of your family and in your home. So praise God. Thank you for reading that. That was awesome. Praise the Lord. And um, does anybody want to share anything before we close? Please, let's, you know, let's pray now. I think I think it'd be a good time to, to before, you know, we close to end in some prayer. Does anyone need a prayer or sharing of something? Yes, Audrey. No, I'm just agreeing with you. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah. Denise, Minister Denise, Nicole, <laughs> Will, Ramon. I can use a prayer. My nose, I'm getting a runny nose, which is not usual, unusual, but <laughs> keep me in your prayers. Hey, I just wanted to add um, just quickly. Um, yes. You know, this whole um, journey that the Lord has taken us, you know, it's really, he's concentrating us to himself to himself you know and yes. you know so you know so that's why it's so important you know this prayer also you know how he says grace and mercy and, and intercession in heaven you know yes. um yeah i you know in, in my spirit or at least what i'm receiving is that you know that we should be always in constant um prayer mm -hmm. you know fellowship connection right yeah you know even you know and the effort you know so just ask the holy spirit you know I, I'll, I'll pray into it i just i pray in the holy name of yeshua that the holy spirit would just Yes. Continue to just burn in us that we will always be the temple of God, that where God resides, Lord, that we will always um uh, come to your throne room boldly, Lord, and both on uh, heaven as well as on earth, Lord, that we just yes. um receive mercy, that we can come to you and um 
repent of, and that we may always take any thoughts, we take all thoughts captive, Lord, and just cast out anything that is not of you so that you are holy God and that we can approach your throne room with holiness, Lord. Lord, at any time that we're feeling um, attack or anything or feeling condemned, Lord, that we just come to your throne, throne room, Lord, and, and appeal, Lord. We appeal, Lord, and we ask for your forgiveness. And we also um, um, ask you to, you know, in the, the decree that we refute anything that is not of you, Lord, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray. Amen. 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 And Thank you. also, I'd like to have prayer for, not yes. for my but this weekend, uh, SatanCon is starting mm -hmm. in uh, Boston, and tomorrow is uh, the first day, really. Uh, and um, you know, and as we've been praying for this, I keep on seeing that this, you know, the scripture in First John it talks about light, uh, that God is light, and uh, and and in Him there is no absolutely no darkness at all. And we know we know that light dispels darkness. Even one little flicker of a candle, light dispels darkness. So right. here, I, what I've been praying is, um, I'm just going to pray it. Yeah, why don't you lead in prayer in that? Yeah, I'll just pray it. So, Lord, I thank you for all of the people who are practicing witchcraft and Satanism, Ooh, who are in those places of darkness, that you're bringing yes. to Boston, Lord. You are bringing them there. And I know that there's going to be, uh, there's other Christians are coming and they're inundating that city, oh, Lord. They're coming yes. from all over Hallelujah. the country. And Lord, I pray that this would be the day of their salvation, Lord. They come for one purpose, but Lord, I pray that you would redirect Ooh, them to another purpose, Lord. That Lord, that you would invade their darkness, invade their darkness with your light. Right. You, That's right. You used all of the, the worshiping warriors. I know that there's going to be one um ministry that's going to have uh i think they're having 24 hours or non-stop worship and pray in one area and i know michelle is um going to have another thing going on in another part of boston and there's evangelists coming in lord i pray lord as they go in as your children are going in we do pray for your protection but lord use them use them as shining lights dispel right. the darkness oh god let this be a, a time of a mighty harvest of souls lord let there be a mighty harvest of souls, those broken, hurting people who are who are captured, captivated and captured in bondage to that darkness, Lord. Yes. Release them from that darkness, Lord. Release that in the mighty name of Jesus. In and I do pray that Satan can, yes. Satan can would be a bust, would be a yes. bust, oh God, yes. would Amen. not be profitable in the mighty name of Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Father. Remove that filth, Lord God. Remove that demonic force, merciful Father. Yes, bring in that light, dear Lord. Bring in the light, dear God. Destroy the merciful Father right in their steps, Lord Father. We pray that in Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 What they thought they were going to bring for bad, but the Lord will turn it around and make it for his good, for his glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That they will come to know you, dear God. Hallelujah, through these prayers, O oh Lord, this intercession, dear God. And for those people, Lord, Father, protect them that are there, dear God. Please protect them, dear Lord. Hallelujah, they would be great witnesses, dear Lord, to those that are in the, po in the negative, dear Lord. Bring them into the light, into the positive. Merciful God, in the power, the presence, and the authority of Yeshua, we pray. Amen and amen. And Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you for these beautiful people, Lord God, that love you so desperately, Lord, that are seeking your face, dear God, wanting to be those watchmen. They're waiting and listening, dear God, learning and prepare them, Lord God, to continue to grow in this ministry, we pray. As intercessors, dear God, following your example is the greatest watchman. Thank you, bless you, praise you, keep them safe throughout the week. And, and Ramon, I was going to ask you how that thing went at work. We prayed the other day for... Um, something at, at your job i was just wondering how yeah, that it, went it was thank you for asking it was a perfect outcome and the lord Ooh, answers the prayer that's so thank you good awesome awesome thank you so good much report. yeah you know it's the the unity of the saints when we come together Ooh, you know I, of course i could you know go by you know typically i would have probably gone by myself but it also takes a humbling to bring it out and just be in union and that's how we do you know the the one body of christ defeating the enemy 
Yes, hallelujah. Power in numbers or yeah. strength in numbers. So anything like that, God. you know, anything that we're, it's a season that I'm feeling a little bit more, you know, in the last three weeks, really things have been very kind of oppressive, but I know that Yeshua, we 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 can go to the throne room and, and, and walk in the victory that Yeshua has yes. given us. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yes. And, and, and we won't forget to pray for your runny nose. It, we don't want that to be anything. You know, that's going to deter you. And in, 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 even if it's just allergies, praise God. So so if anybody would like to lead out and pray for Ramon, um, that the Lord will continuously heal him and that nothing is going to, you know, become of this. Praise God. Nicole, would you like to lead on in that healing prayer or or anyone can lead out really? Praise God. Well, I plead the blood of Jesus over you right now, women, in Yeshua name, because the blood of Jesus heal, the blood of Jesus protect, because allergies, whatever they are, whatever they call themselves, epidemic and you know, the Lord. So that just to distract us from what we need to do, so what we have to do for the Lord. So I can solve them and I bind them and I see they not from you, Lord. And the blood of Jesus is over you, everyone, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. And you Ooh, are yes. you yourself healed in Jesus' name. And I feel the blood of Jesus over all of us, yes. more protection over us because we want faith. We won't get sick because the Lord Jesus helped us. That's yes, why he's hallelujah. his blood on the cross for us. So to do we be healed so we can be perfect, just like he called us to be perfect. Because uh, that Father God created us at his, his image. So his image, there's no sickness. In his, his, in his, his image, there's no sickness. There's Ooh, no hallelujah. sickness. So we are like him <laughs> and we will be like him. And we will yes. be perfect in perfect harmony. With patience, love, yes. we want each other, uh, each other. Yes. Joy, peace, forgiveness, in Yeshua name, amen. Amen, and God bless each and amen. every one of you. Be Thank blessed you. the rest of you. You're welcome. Hi. Thank you. Good night. Have a blessed week.